Hello, everyone. I think uh, I'm going to start. Uh, this is Jean from Mind. Uh, we are applying machine learning and natural language processing retailer and e-commerce space. Today, I'm just going to share what we are doing and what we learned. First, let me first uh, introduce who we are. So the two co-founders of Mind. We were both original from Maluba, a company applying deep learning in building voice assistant, similar to what Siri did. We support voice assistant for Samsung, LG, BlackBerry, Tesla, and etc. To polish the voice assistant, two major techniques we focus on were spoken dialogue system and machine reading comprehension. Maluba was acquired by Microsoft in 2017. While we were doing the voice assistant, one major problem we were facing is we don't really have a lot of data. Though we support a bunch of OEMs and got a decent volume of the traffic, but the data we got, really, that's not quite interesting. People just use voice assistant to ask about the weather or maybe play a music or chit chat lot of noise in that. So instead, after Maluba, we started looking into some space that might be having more data, more interesting data. At the end, we found, oh, the retailer space might be interesting. There are a lot of online shops. There are a lot of forums, a lot of videos, pictures, and articles talking about these products. We felt really excited about this data. So we started Mind. The vision of Mind is to make use of all kinds of data on the web and help customers to understand and discover the products they really need. Currently, we provide the data service to multiple online retailers and the shopping centers. To understand the data, we mainly use natural language processing and image recognition techniques. To serve end customer, we also use a bunch of techniques related to information retrieval and the recommending system. Basically, so uh, now I can talk about what problem we are solving. So basically, we started with retailer's product catalog and the inventory information. For the domain we don't really understand, we also scrape a bunch of different sources, including videos, social media, online reviews, and other online shops, and articles, and uh, pictures. So with this data, we try to digest all these data and construct our product knowledge graph. And with the knowledge graph, we can serve multiple purpose, including customer can search and the browsing the products, we can do the recommendation, and even for the customer education. For example, I think customer education is quite important. It's really hard to do without knowledge graph. The other day, I try to buy a task chair because I start to work from home. And it spent me almost a day to look into these YouTube videos to see this comparison between different products. And it took me really long time. And with the knowledge graph, I think we can better guide the users and the customers see what they need, what fits them, what features they may be interested, maybe not interested. And also we serve these shopping centers and the retailers. So what kind of information in our knowledge graph so we can serve the customers? We have all kinds of features for products. Yes, we can get the features or attributes for products from manufacturing. But all these features are kind of objective, but people sometimes are interested in more subjective 
features, such as when I'm sitting on the task chair, I care if it's soft or hard, but it's never talk about in the manufacturing data. And also, there are some like people, uh, the manufacturer always talk about a good thing about their products. Like when I look into the shampoo, all the shampoo they have, oh, it's good for all kinds of hairs, oil hair, dry hair, all kinds of hair. But actually, when you look into these reviews, you will find out it's not true, right? Certain products, are more better for certain type of for different people. And also we have the product comparison, like some for very similar product, we see the strengths and the weakness of these products. And we also learn the attribute association in, in these products. For example, for like for particular like a machine learning engineer, we know the laptop with uh, for example, GPU is a, is a good option. Or for example, for certain people with uh, say dry skin, we know certain ingredient in the product is good. And also we can understand the certain product combination makes sense because people always talk about these product go with, uh, with this product very well, this kind of thing. So we grab this information content and grab them together, organize them and serve this information in different kinds of ser services. So in this pipeline, we use machine learning intensively in all kinds of uh, pipelines, including data collection, data digestion, and the search and the recommendation. So let me share some of the lessons we learned from this a uh, few years of experience. The first lesson we learned is like, I think I was from natural language processing background, the same thing for the other co-founder. So we love natural language processing and we try to solve every problem with natural language processing. But after about two years, we kept falling into this problem that NLP couldn't solve especially when we deal with information from social media and YouTube. Text is much more casual, so it's hard to capture the semantics sometimes. Sometimes the information is even not, does not exist in the text. People just put a bottle of product, say, oh, this is something, and uh, they may not even talk about this product. Oh, this is what we need to talk about. But if with the info, uh, information from the image or the video, it's very easy to capture this. So instead of doing the text understanding purely, we use multimodal to understand from multiple channels of information. Another lesson we learned is we, we were from machine learning. So we see every problem as a machine learning problem. Everything is just a prediction, but in reality, it's not. So we learned actually, we should build a very simple system from the engineering principle, build the whole system with very simple components first. And then we identif identify which component is actually the bottleneck. Is this bottleneck related to machine learning problem? If it's related to machine learning problem, then let's use machine learning to solve this problem. For example, we started building this web crawler or scraper. Like we just started with a bunch of templates or rules or very simple breadth first traverse to get all the information from web. But now we have hundreds of thousands of websites to scrape. It's really, really hard to get this by pure rules or templates. So we develop a system. We try to, this system will guide the scraper to see which link it will go to download for the next time. And for each link, it learned a parser to pass the content from this web page. 
So this is how we apply machine learning. Like we start with a software engineering problem, and when it's hard enough, then let's solve it with machine learning. The third lesson we learn is, like usually we keep machine learning as the end of the pipeline. Like look at this pipeline. First, we grab a bunch of raw data, unlabeled data, and we apply some maybe unsupervised learning on it. And we have some hypothesis, we have some groups or clusters, and then we have people to do the annotation. After that, we have training data, let's go. Let's do some machine learning model. But we found actually machine learning model, it's not end of story. It's the beginning of the story or it's a step in the pipeline. So in our pipeline, we actually apply machine learning not only in serving for the end customer, we also use machine learning guide the scraper, the annotator to select which kind of data are we going to get. For example, when we look into certain domains, we are sometimes we confident, oh, for this domain, the language model is very, very good. And probably there are some other places the language model is not that good. Then let's look into these spaces and grab more unlabeled data from that space. And after that, we have the uh, unlabeled data and we also need to very carefully because the data annotation is expensive. So we, uh, we apply this active learning practice in both the data scraping and the data annotation process. So at the end, we just need to grab a very small data set and can be improved the model significantly. So yeah, I think that's all. I think the time is up and that's all for my today's sharing. Thank you.